Hello, this is Mr. Agbamu Idono Grenier. I'm here to teach mathematics on the topic coordinate geometry. And my target for today's class, which are my objectives, is going to be to determine the angle between two lines, then determine the condition for, par for parallelism, and to determine the condition for perpendicularity. Okay, let's go straight to the point now. So when we talk of an angle between two lines in coordinate geometry, it's just very simple. They will give you two lines. And remember from the beginning of this class, I told you that when we talk of lines in, when we talk of coordinate geometry, you may not necessarily need to draw your graph. So you don't need to plot the graph and draw the straight line. They start looking for the angle between the two lines. So they, will, they expect you to have an equation that you use to calculate the angles between the two lines. So that is what I want to derive today. I want to show you how you can get the angle between the two lines, then how you can apply them to questions. But in today's class, I'm not going to solve an example. I'll just derive them for you so that you know how to get the angles. So you may not necess necessarily need to plot your graph before measuring this angle. Just know the line. They will give you the equation of the line or the gradient. Then from there, you can get the angles between the two lines. But to show you this equation, I need to demonstrate it using graph paper. But before I show you the graph paper that I want to use to demonstrate it, let me define some terms. Remember, our target is angle between two lines. So let's define the symbol for the angle. Okay, let's take, for example, let's use theta to represent the angle. So let's take uh, theta as the angle. So if I say let, so let theta, let theta now be the angle. So let theta be the angle between between the between the two lines. So let theta be the angle between the two lines. So take note of that. Then from here, we can derive other information we need. So if theta is the angle now, how do I get this angle between the two lines? So let me go to my graph and demonstrate what I have for you so that you can understand it very well. So this is our graph paper. So we need two lines on this graph. Okay, let me just take these two lines. Let's take line. Let me take the first line. Okay, let's take it from here. Let's say we have a point A linking to another line here okay point b okay so i have this line having a and b as a point on this line okay so let's have another line let's say somewhere here for example to okay, let's say somewhere here so this is another line having c and d as point on this line so we have line c d and line a b all right so these two lines, now you can see that they intercept at the point. They intercept at this point here, you can see it. So the angle they want us to find is this angle. The angle between these two lines, line AB and line CD, is this angle here. Let me get my pen so that you, you can see it very well. Okay. And I can point what you need to understand. So this is the angle they want us to calculate. When they say find the angle between two lines, this is the angle they want you to find. And that is the angle I label as theta in our write-up. So let's call it theta. So how do I get this angle? Remember, as I said before, in this topic, you are not going to plot the graph. They will not even give you the equation of the graph. They may not give you the equation of the line. For example, these are my two equations now. You can see the first line, which is AB. This is the equation of the line. See line AB, this is the equation. Then the second line, which is in CD. See line CD, this is the equation of line CD. You can see it. But in a standard exam, nobody will give you this equation. Because they know that if they give you this equation, from there, some people may come and plot the graph like this. And if you do that, you just waste your time. And by the time you are doing that, time is going. Or they may give you the equation. All they want you to do is to get the gradient. So with the gradient of these two lines, A, B, and C, D, I can derive this angle between these two lines. So take note of this. So now I need this angle. I need this angle. 
let me call it this angle theta 1 let me call it theta 1 then I also need this angle let me call it theta 2 yes theta 2 okay so let's call it theta 2 okay so if you look at this triangle we form here let me label the point so that you can get the triangle I'm talking about I mean this point this point here this point here and this point hmm. so these are the points that form the triangle this point E this point F and point G so E F G you can see that they are triangles E F G they are triangles then this point E F G we discover that theta 1 is the angle between line a b and the x axis then theta 2 is the angle between line c d and the x axis and if you could recall in our class on gradient we say that gradient is defined as the tan of the angle between that line and the x axis so if i find tan theta 1 i will get the gradient of line a b if i find tan theta 2 this angle here I will get the gradient of line CD. So with that uh, approach, we can do some calculations. From there, we can derive this angle tan theta. We can get the tan of this angle so that we can use our trigonometric uh, formulas, trigonometric ratio. Now from there, we can get the angle we need to get our angle between the two lines. So but take note of this analysis. This is the analysis you need. The one more thing before we go to our calculation is if you study this triangle EFG, you will see that theta 2 is exterior angle. And from your theory of triangle, we say exterior angle is equal to sum of opposite interior angles. That means theta 2 is going to be equal to theta 1 plus theta. Theta 2 is going to be equal to theta 1 plus theta. So that is where our proving of this formula angles between two lines going to start from and that is the aim of all this sketch I'm showing so this sketch I just showed you now that's what I want you to understand how we came about with this theta 2 equal to theta 1 plus theta so let's go straight to our right top so that we derive the formula and move on all right so if I said let theta be the angle between the two lines, then let, let theta 1 also. So let theta 1 be, be the angle, be the angle, be the angle between the, the first line and the x as is so take note of that so let theta 1 be the angle between the first line and the x as is so take note of then let's define theta 2 also so let's define theta 2 so we need to be fast so let theta 2 be the angle now so let theta 2 be the angle between the second be the angle between the second line and the x axis be the angle between the second line and the x axis so take note of that so let theta to be the angle between the second line second line and the x second line and the x axis then let theta 1 be the angle between the first line and the x axis so that is what i want you to get if these are the angles, then tan of these two angles is going to give us the gradient of this angle. Then we can use it to relate this tan theta 1. But remember our formula we just explained from there. We say theta, we say theta 2, we say theta 2, we say theta 2 now is going to be equals to theta 1 plus theta 1 plus theta 
so this is where our proving is going to start from so and how do we get this remember the sketch i showed you that theta 2 is the exterior angle exterior angle is equal to sum of opposite interior angle so this is what we need then what we need is this angle theta is the angle we need so let's make theta the subject now if i make theta the subject of this formula i'm going to have theta is equals to theta 1 is going to the other side which is going to be theta 2 theta 2 minus theta 1 so that is the equation we are going to get okay so if we get it the next thing is we need to introduce tan to both sides so let's introduce tan to both sides so let's take tan that is the tangent of both sides now let's say take tan tan of both sides so if you take tan of both sides you are going to get something like this now which is tan theta this is tan this is tan theta is going to be equals to tan tan theta 2 tan theta 2 minus tan theta 1 so this is what we are going to get okay take note of this so by finding tan of both sides we give you this so now that we have this now we have found tan of both sides is tan theta equals to tan open bracket theta 2 minus theta 1 the next thing is we need to use our compound angle formula in trigonom in trigonometry to simplify this so if you could recall our trigonometry so if you could recall so if you recall take note of this if you recall our trigonometry you will see that tan theta in trigonometry tan theta is equals to tan is equal to tan theta minus yes in okay that is tan theta 2 tan theta 2 minus tan tan theta tan theta 1 divided by 1 divided by 1 divided by 1 plus tan theta tan theta that is tan theta 2 tan theta 2 tan theta tan theta 1 okay let me split it out clearly okay so that is compound angle this is what we want to simplify so this place need to be theta 2 but i need to put it in bracket so that we can get it clearly which is a theta theta 2 minus theta 1 okay so this is what i want us to take note of so when you ref recall your ratio and your compound angle formula so this is what you are going to get so if you recall compound angle take notes so if you recall compound angle so using your compound angle formula this is what you are going to get in this place so take note of this so tan theta 2 minus tan minus tan theta 2 minus theta 1 is going to give you tan theta 2 minus tan theta 1 divided by 1 plus tan theta 2 tan theta 1 so this is what you are going to get in your compound angle formula so if we now substitute this equation now this formula into the right hand side of this our equation we are going to prove our formula in this way then we are going to get tan theta tan theta will now be equals to tan tan theta 2 tan theta 2 minus tan theta 1 divided by 1 
1 plus tan theta 1 plus tan theta 2 then tan tan theta 1 okay we need to make it big okay tan okay tan that is tan theta and theta two. Okay. So you can see we now replace this with the right hand side of the equation. Then tan theta is now equals to this, which is this. Then let's also remember now. If you recall our last class on gradient, we said gradient is equals to tan theta. If you remember what we said in that class, we say gradient is also equals to tan. The gradient is also equals to tan theta. So this is what we said in that class. So if gradient is equal to tan theta, and another thing again we said, we said gradient is tan theta, and the same gradient is equal to m. We use m as a symbol for gradient. So let gradient be m, and let gradient also equal to tan theta. So if this is our gradient, then what are, what are we going to do now? We are going to substitute this value of... We are going to substitute theta as m in these two equations. But to do that, let's define it clearly. So let's so let's let m let m1 let m1 be the gradient. Let m1 be the gradient of of first line. Let gradient be the let m m1 be the gradient of first line. Then let let m2. Let M to be the gradient, be the gradient of the second of the second line. Okay, so if M1 is the gradient of first line, M2 is the gradient of second line. So we can substitute M1 and M2 into this term, theta 2 and theta 1, and we'll do, and with that we will get the formula we need of the two lines because every line have an equation and every line have a gradient. So you, you, they can either give you the gradient of both lines, which is M1 and M2, you put it in the formula, or they can give you the equation of the line, and from the equation of the line, you can get the gradient of the two lines. Then finally, our equation of the line will now be, we now say, therefore now, so therefore, the angle, therefore the angle now, the angle between, between two lines therefore the angle between two lines is okay, let's derive it let's put the final answer here now so the angle between two lines is it's going to be tan theta it's going to be tan theta equal to so theta 2 will be replaced with m2 since tan theta is gradient theta 2 will be replaced with m2 minus theta 1 will be replaced with m1 yes divided by 1 plus m okay, 1 plus m2 1 plus m2 m1 so this is the equation that you will use or the formula that you will use to calculate angle between two lines take note of this all you need to do is to get the angle get the gradient of the two lines m2 m1 then subtract them divided by 1 plus m2 m1 so this is the formula you need it's very very important so that is one thing i want you to get then if you want to derive condition for parallel line and condition for perpendicular line all you need to do is this all you need to do is this let me show you if you look at these two lines we drew the other time let me remove this point if you look at these two lines we drew you know if this first line now is line a so if you have another line let me draw a parallel line so that you can see what you're saying. so this parallel line if i take a parallel line 
of this okay let me get the point let's put the point here so if I get a parallel line of this one you can see these two lines are parallel lines and what did we know about parallel lines we say parallel lines never meet and if parallel lines never meet that means angles between two parallel lines will give you what now see the angle between two parallel lines is zero so angle between two parallel lines is zero and because they can never meet so take note of that so there's no angle between two parallel lines so if we go to our right up now let me move up so that we can see it clearly okay okay so let's put the condition for parallel lines here okay so parallel lines now So if you look at parallel lines now, what are the conditions for parallel lines? So the condition for parallel line is, we have already seen it here, the condition is parallel lines never meet. And see, the angle between two parallel lines is zero. So if parallel lines can never meet, you remember our equation we just proved now. The angle between two lines is tan, is tan theta. Tan theta equals to, we say m2 minus m2 minus m1 divided by 1 plus m2 m2 m1 so this was the equation we derived just now so with this equation you can calculate the angles between two lines but if the two lines are parallel lines so what are you going to do you have seen that the angles between two lines are zero so the, if the two lines are uh, parallel so the angle between them will be zero so this theta is going to be zero remember we say let theta be the angles between the two lines and that was how we derived this equation by knowing the two gradient to calculate the angles between the two lines but if the angle between them is parallel that means theta is going to be zero so for parallel lines now this theta is going to be equals to zero so if theta is zero put the angle zero here you will see that and then you, you are going to get tan, tan 0 would, would be equals to m2. Tan 0 is going to be equals to m2 minus m1 divided by 1 plus m2. Okay, m2. m2, m1. Okay, so you are going to get this. Then if you get this now, then what is tan theta? If you let's use our calculator and check it, what is tan theta? Sorry, what is tan zero? So what is tan zero? Tan zero is going to give us zero. You can see. So tan zero is zero. That means on this place, tan zero is zero. So you have zero is equals to this equation here. So you are going to get something like this. That means tan zero is equal to zero. So zero will be equal to this. So this is what you are going to get now. So if if tan zero is zero, then let's cross multiply. When you cross multiply, yeah, you know how to cross multiply. The denominator is going to times zero. So when you cross multiply, you are going to get zero times all this denominator, which is zero. That means you are going to get zero is equal to m2 m2 minus m1 then when you take your m1 to this side collect like 10 take m1 to the other side of the equation it's going to give us m1 m1 is equals to m2 so this is the condition for parallel lines so this is what i want you to take note of so when two lines are parallel, you can put it in statement. When two lines are parallel, that means they have equal gradient. 
So the condition for parallel lines is so the condition the condition for parallel for parallel line is condition for parallel line is we have we have equal we have equal gradients. So parallel lines have equal gradient. Take note of that. Parallel lines have equal gradient. So let me come up so that you can see it clearly. So when two lines are parallel, we say they have equal gradient. So take note of that. So this is the condition for parallel lines. Then let's do the less next condition for perpendicular lines. So take note of all we did today. So let's do condition for perpendicular line. So if you go to perpendicular line, what are you going to get? So for perpendicular lines, let me copy this so that will make it fast. So for perpendicular lines, we are going to get okay. Let's see perpendicular. 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 So if the two lines are perpendicular, so remember this is the equation to calculate angle between two points. So if the two lines are perpendicular, what does that mean? Let me also show you here. So let me remove this line so that I'll demonstrate it here. Okay. So if I have perpendicular line, see this is perpendicular line. So if I select, let's say, point B, and I select my line, you can see this perpendicular line. So perpendicular line means that the angle between the two lines is 90 degrees. So if I get this angle, if I find the angle between this line and this line, you can see that the angle is 90 degrees. So that's what perpendicular lines means. You can see it. The angle between the two lines is 90 degrees. So if the angle between the two lines is 90 degrees, that means the two lines have perpendicular line. That means this angle, the angle between them is going, this angle theta is going to be 90 degrees. So what are we going to do if it's 90 degrees? So let's substitute 90 degrees in this place of theta. So you get what? Yeah, so we are going to get tan 90. So let's find tan 90. You see what we are going to get if you find tan 90. So tan 90, let's go to our calculator and see. So if I find tan 90, you can see when I tap my equal to, you see what it said? In determinant. That means tan 90 is undefined. You cannot determine it. You cannot find tan 90. So tan 90 is undefined. So since tan 90 is undefined, and what does undefined mean? In mathematics, when we talk of undefined expressions we're talking of an expression that have denominator to be zero for example let me try something like this. let's say seven divided by zero you can see it if i press my equal to you see that it's not giving me any answer it's um you can see an error symbol there so this expression is divided by zero it cannot be computed so anything divided by zero is undefined the same thing with tan 90 tan 90 is undefined because it does not have any meaning in mathematics the same thing with a number divided by zero if you try three divided by zero you get the same result as long as the number is divided by zero is undefined so if tan 90 is undefined that means on my right hand side the denominator is going to be zero so if i make my denominator equal to zero which is one so i'm going to get one plus m2 1 plus m2 m1 this is going to be equals to 0 so this is the condition for perpendicular lines so perpendicular line 1 plus m2 m1 is equal to 0 but let me let me make m1 the subject of this uh, equation let me just put it like this which is m m2 m1 equals to minus 1 so this is the condition for perpendicular lines so in perpendicular line product of the gradient is going to give you minus 1 
we can also put it in statement just like the statement we have here that the condition for parallel line say the condition for parallel lines there's s in this place so for parallel line they have equal gradient then condition for perpendicular line okay the condition for perpendicular lines now for perpendicular condition for perpendicular lines is so the condition for perpendicular line is is the product is the product of the two gradients the product of the two gradients is equal is equal to negative one is equal to negative one so this is the condition for perpendicular lines take note of this take note of this take note of this it's very very important let me move it together I want you to see it clearly okay now this is all I have for you in my class for today that the condition for perpendicular lines is going to give us m1 m2 when you multiply the gradient of the two lines is going to give you minus one that is the condition for perpendicular lines then the condition for parallel lines says when you the, grade, the two gradients are going to be equal since gradient since parallel lines never meet so the two gradients are going to be equal then the equation to calculate angle between two lines is this so this is all i want you to take note for in today's class angle between two lines is gradient of the second gradient of the the second gradient of the line minus first gradient divided by one plus second gradient and first gradient then perpendicular lines perpendicular line means the angle is zero then when you substitute into the angle between two lines formula you are going to get m1 equal to m2 so condition for for parallel lines state that they have equal gradient then the last one which is perpendicular line says the product of the two gradient is going to be equal to negative one then it depends some people can still leave their answer like this if you want you can also decide to make m1 the subject you can say m1 m1 is equal to minus one divided by m2 so this is also another way you can represent condition for perpendicular line that the gradient first gradient is equal to minus one divided by second gradient so i hope you enjoyed today's class do have a nice day and take care Bye.